With their heads held high, their feet moving with purpose, they march together. Each step a declaration to the world, we are still here. It's been incredible and today to see so many people here in solidarity later, in March. They come from New York, Los Angeles, Central America, Australia, South Africa, Japan. Thousands of Jews and non-Jews from more than 50 countries across the globe are together here in Poland for the International March of the Living. More than 250,000 people have participated in this march since it first began in 1988. The gathering happens every year on Holocaust Remembrance Day. Participants sing and learn each other's stories. Then they embark together on a nearly two mile walk from Auschwitz I over to Auschwitz II, which is the death camp more commonly known as Birkenau. Andy and Amanda Weisenberg are the grandchildren of Auschwitz survivors. They were brought here on this railroad, knowing that my, my bubby, her little sister, was nine years old and taken from her arms. Shana was taken from her arms and she never saw her again. And that was here. Amanda calls her grandmother Lily Markowitz Bubby. She managed to survive Auschwitz. So did Ivor Pearl, who's now in his late 80s living in England. For me to come over here, the first thing you, it reminds me of how I arrived. He never imagined he'd live to see the end of World War II, let alone find himself back here at this site of horror decades later. As I came here with a large family, and only me and my brother survived. So I think to, to, to condense it all in one sentence would be very, very hard, but unmanageable and undescribable. Yet with his granddaughter Leah by his side now, Ivor is back in Auschwitz, this time in a show of defiance to the Nazis. It's incredible. I'm so, so proud of him, everything he's achieved, um, and I'm honored to be here with him. I mean, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. I also wouldn't be here if it weren't for my grandfather, Nat, my poppy. He miraculously survived more than two years in Auschwitz. It was chilling for me to walk in and out of these gates where he was once herded through. These German words are bite macht frei, translate to work will set you free, a cruel deception. In 1995, we established the first uh, Holocaust Learning Center in all of Japan. Speaking in Hebrew to a translator, Makoto Otsuka tells us about Holocaust education efforts happening now in his country. Japan was an ally to Germany during the war. Otsuka, who's a Japanese Christian, spent time living in Israel in the 70s, which is how he learned to speak Hebrew. This is his third time participating in the March of the Living. We started from nothing, and uh, lots of people in Japan read the Diary of Anne Frank, which is translated into Japanese, and that becomes for them an entree point, the first point into the study of the Holocaust, but not the last point. Of the estimated 10 to 12,000 people marching here, many are draped in Israeli flags. But this walk is not meant to be political. It's about recognizing that the Jewish people as a whole persevered and survived, even after six million European Jews were murdered. Because of them, I had to make this journey. This march also honors and remembers the millions of victims from other groups who were murdered during the Holocaust, including gay men, gypsies, Jehovah's Witnesses, the disabled, and German political opponents. This group represents the thousands of prisoners who walked this same path decades ago, a sea of humanity headed towards its slaughter. They arrived here at Auschwitz almost daily, the massive transports reaching their peak in 1944. That year, more than 400,000 Jews were deported from Hungary in just 54 days. I think that the really special thing about this trip is that we have so many grandkids of survivors and you see the potential and what could have been. We'll never know what could have been, but what we do know is that descendants of survivors like me, Leah, Andy and Amanda 
are doing our best to keep the memories alive. I don't know how they did it. I, we keep saying that and looking at each other and saying, I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they were so strong. But this is the result of all that strength, a resiliency, a mission to spread peace and understanding, a promise to never forget. Dana Arshin, Fox News.